Welcome back. Hope your lunch was good. And uh, while people are drifting in, I just want to introduce Mary Meeker. You are about to meet something rare and wonderful. Mary Meeker is a Wall Street legend in a really good way, which is not always the case these days. But Mary is managing director of Morgan Stanley, leading the firm's global technology research team. That really undercuts her magnitude. Uh, she's known for her clarity of vision, seeing things early, the net, mobile, you name it, um, and the integrity of her work. She's going to give a very data-rich um, presentation now with some startling and compelling points about where the mobile internet is going. Uh, expect a data-packed view around use, around consumption, around behavioral changes. You may find it is about consumer behavior to some extent, but bear in mind what we were saying this morning, how much of the consumer behavior comes to inflect what goes on in the business world and what she'll be working with in the next couple of years. Mary? Okay. Thank you. The, uh, I just want to say, if Google can make its products as efficient and as good as that lunch was, um, that's, all a, uh, that's all a really good thing. I'm sorry, I have so many screens here, I'm not sure which one is mine. Um, but thank you for coming back from lunch. I was stunned. The food was great, and 30 minutes into it, um, I thought an hour had passed, and we had all had a little extra time. And I have some extra time, because I can't figure out how to move my slides. And there we go. So the, the theme of the presentation, I'm going to talk briefly about the stock market and why that's important to you, and then talk about the state of the internet, some high-level trends across the world, and then do a deep dive on the, uh, on the mobile internet. So first and foremost, one of the things that um, all investors struggle with and all business people struggle with is what's the stock market telling us? And oftentimes, the stock market goes in the opposite direction of what the direction that where we think it should. And the reality is the stock market is a leading indicator of where the economy is going, not a lagging indicator. And what this uh, beautifully color-coded chart represents is performance of a bunch of different stock market indices from April of 2007 to the present. The yellow line is the S&P 500, which is a proxy for US companies. The red line is the China Shanghai, Shanghai Index. Blue line is Russia. Pink is NASDAQ, et cetera. The green line is crude oil. Uh, and I have this here because the market began telling us in the third quarter of 2007 we were about to enter a recession. And many of us, as you recall, business was a little weaker, but it wasn't really that bad. And then uh, it began to get worse and worse and worse, crescendoing, depending on who you are and where you were, sometime in the, in the, at the end of 2008. And then the stock market, in effect, started to recover well before we were seeing it in our businesses. So I have this here uh, because the good news is the market's telling us that things are continue to get better. Uh, and it will know before we know. It doesn't mean a daily trade means things are going to get, it will get worse tomorrow. But it's something you should carry with you. Uh, going forward as you manage your businesses. So bottom line on the internet is the mobile internet will be bigger. Uh, there will be more people accessing the internet via mobile devices than desktop devices within five years, uh, potentially well before five years. Internet growth around the world all in remains robust, up about 13% year on year in 2009. But interestingly, 48% of the internet users are in just five countries. Uh, China is number one, US is number two. India is number three, Brazil is number four, and Russia is, is number five. Uh, back in 1995, when Netscape went public, 75% of all internet users were in the United States. We've obviously seen a, um, a, big, a big change, but overall growth remains strong. When we started focusing on figuring, trying to figure out where the mobile internet was going to go, which, which was a very long time ago, uh, we finally pulled our thoughts together in a report that I think you have a link to um, in, at the, at, in December of 2009. We were looking at what was going on with iPod and iTouch, and we said it feels to us that the mobile internet is being adopted faster than the desktop internet was. How can we figure that out? And it's, it was hard to look at the data in the way that, that we thought made sense. And we said, let's just look at some of the more transformative products of the past that relate to communications and connectivity in the internet and see how fast they ramped. And so. The red line at the bottom indicates how many people were using AOL, America Online, 
uh, from the first quarter of launch to the 20th quarter. And for those of us that were around at that point in time, it seemed like it was ramping pretty quickly. Uh, we had a guy at Morgan Stanley who used to count the number of Smiths in the, in the, in the uh, AOL directory to figure out how rapidly it was growing. We've made a lot of progress since then, but moving right along. Um, the blue line looks at the adoption of the Netscape browser. The yellow line looks at the adoption of NTT Docomo's iMode mobile internet service in Japan. And all those things were heralded as being first in class, best in class, and ramping very quickly. Fast forward to today and look at the adoption of iPhone and iTouch now in da, 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 about the 10th or 11th quarter since launch, and the trajectory is extraordinary, unlike anything we've ever seen. I don't know if you're a skier, but I could handle any of those runs, uh, except the green run. I might handle that on a stretcher. Um, but indeed, the mobile internet is ramping faster um, than any, anything we have, we have seen before. If it feels that way, the data backs it up. I indicated earlier, this is our very detailed chart that illustrates in great detail um, when mobile internet users will surpass desktop users. We can supply you with more data if you need it. It's obviously not all there, but the trajectory is fast. Back in uh, 1996 and 1997, we did a forecast for how big e-commerce would be as a percent of total retail. And um, that doesn't matter. But where we are today is about 4% of, of total retail is accounted for for e-commerce. Took about 15 years to get to that level. Our bet that the ramp to 4 to 5% of commerce on mobile happens way faster than 15 years. It could potentially happen in five. So something for those of you that are retail organizations or frankly any organization you need to be aware of. This is just historical data and contextual data from Forrester. Um, this gives you a sense of the, of the categories of commerce that have different penetration levels online. Computer products, books, gift cards, music and video, more than 20% of their business is online. Toys, video games, almost 20%, and then home furnishings, et cetera, less than 10%, just to give you context. And this data is from 2007. If anyone has data that's more current, we'll take it. Um, but the point is, it, it, it's, it's, it's ramping pretty quickly. Um, we looked, one of the things that we did when we wrote this mobile internet report, and one of the things I've learned at trying to figure out how new markets might develop is, where can we go to figure out where, where we've seen this movie before? Um, and in the mobile internet, we were able to look at Japan. The mobile internet in Japan was sort of on a trajectory like the desktop internet was in the US in the mid-90s to the 2000s. And in Japan, the leading e-commerce company is a company called Rakuten, and 19% of their fourth quarter revenue came from mobile devices. And that gives you a sense of how this trajectory may play out, in our view, in the US. Um, one more point on communications, social networking, um, in many ways, is the new email. If you look at the data, in, um, the, in July of 2009, the number of social networking users surpassed the number of email users uh, per comm score. And the time spent on social networking versus time spent on email, that transition took place in November 2007, also according for, to ComScore. If you work at an enterprise uh, and you manage IT for an enterprise, this is what people are doing at home. Uh, it may not be what people are doing at work, but it's probably what they want to be doing at work. Um, this is um, an eyesore slide, uh, but we just kept adding more and more stuff to it. Consumers, bottom line, consumers expect to get their stuff 24-7 uh, from the palms of their hands. Um, I was thrilled using AT&T uh, to watch the Masters um, driving up Third Avenue on the way from New York City to JFK Airport last night um, and couldn't believe I wasn't disconnected. But um, I now expect that anytime I'm, I'm traveling to, to be able to do that. Now to drill down on, on the mobile internet, these are the six themes I'm going to focus on. Number one, wealth creation and destruction will be material. As it relates to mobile internet, it always is in computing cycles. I think there are probably a few people in the room that remember digital equipment and Honeywell and Wang and Compaq before it was something in my wife's purse, as John Roach at Tandy said years ago. Um, and, and we're in another one of those. Second, um, mobile is ramping faster than desktop internet, and there are a handful of drivers of that. It's very rare in technology when you see so many things come together at the same time in a recession. 
Uh, the third thing is Apple and is leading in mobile innovation and, and impact for now. Uh, but the depth of the app e ecosystem, the user experience, and pricing will determine the long-term winners. The next point is the game change in communications and commerce platforms, social networking and mobile are merging extremely rapidly. Fifth is massive data growth is driving carrier and equipment transitions. I won't spend a lot of time on that. And the last thing is what I said earlier, we've learned some stuff from what's happened in Japan about how the mobile internet will evolve in the rest of the world. So to the first point, um, these are the tech cycles that we've lived through in the last 50 years, mainframe frame computing in the 60s, mini computing in the 70s, personal computing in the 80s, desktop internet computing in the 90s, and mobile internet computing now. Um, one of the things that happens in each computing cycle is there are 10 times more users um, than the last time. One thing that a lot of investors ask us is, well, how can the market capitalization of this company get high, it's higher? It's already so high. And we take a step back and we say, well, the market opportunity is 10 times bigger. Now we just have to figure out who, who the winners are going to be. And it's a function of increased, increased um, reduced friction, better processing power, improved user interfaces, smaller form factors, lower prices, and expanded services. If there's anyone in the room that had a mainframe in your home, I'm sorry. Um, when you were growing up, if there's anything, or when you were 50, I'm really sorry. Um, if there's anybody that doesn't have at least a few mobile devices in your living room today, I'd, I'd be surprised. And it's not just about the, it's finally not just about the phone, it's also about the refrigerator and the, and, and the thermostat, stuff that was a dream a while ago, which is not too far away. To take a step back, we've had significant changes in the user interface. Uh, we've had a significant changes in input. If you go back to the early days of, of desktop computing, you had a keyboard, and then you moved to a graphical user interface with a mouse, and now we've moved to touch. Um, somebody was telling me a story about how his two-year-old daughter was using an iPhone, and then for the first time went to YouTube, spent a lot of time on it, loved it, put the phone down, TV set was on, went up the TV and tried to turn the channels by swiping, or I guess from here it would be here. Um, but that's what we now expect. Um, and it's also, we've gone, the first, when you got your first PC and used VisiCalc or whatever you used on it, um, you weren't consuming content, you were creating content. So we've evolved from the user interface, but we've also evolved from the type, what, what you expect from the device. And we've really moved from content creation to content consumption um, and all, all the above. So one of the things near and dear to my heart, um, uh, for better or for worse, is that we usually have a lot of wealth creation and destruction in these computing cycles. New companies often win big in new cycles, while incumbents often falter. And then there are incumbents that make the transition to the new cycle um, pretty well. And when I look at the companies that are innovating in the mobile internet today at a really high level, and there's a ton of innovation with smaller startups, but Google is one of those companies, Salesforce.com is one of those companies, Apple is one of those companies, Facebook is one of those companies, Amazon is one of those companies. Um, four of the five of those companies are in effect last generation companies that appear to be forging the way to the next generation in a, in a, pretty, in a pretty powerful way. And mo all of them have a lot of experience with people that have lived through two or three cycles um, that are running the companies. Typically, when these new cycles appear, the infrastructure companies sort of start the way and benefit, then platform companies and application services and, and, and co content companies uh, or commerce companies follow. The next point, and I think this is, is super important, is that there are five trends converging. I've never seen this in my life, all at the same time. 3G, social networking, video over IP, voice over IP, and impressive mobile devices. You've seen this slide, but if there's one slide that encapsulates everything we're saying, this is it. So I decided to show it again. Um, point is desktop, uh, mobile internet growing quickly. So the inflection points. One is 3G. In 2010, the number of three, you, you can, the users, the number of users around the world that use 3G will surpass 20%. One of the things I've learned as a technology observer is that when a new technology hits 20% penetration, that's when it goes on to the mainstream. And 20 to 50% from an investment perspective is typically where investors make the most money in the publicly traded stocks of, of the leaders. And it's when you get uh, the leaders and the laggards get sorted out. Um, if we look at it on a regional basis, we hit that penetration level of 20% or more in Western Europe in 2008. 
We hit it in North America in 2008. We'll hit it in Eastern Europe in 2011 and hit it in Asia, uh, ex-Japan in 2011 and in uh, the Middle East and Africa in, in, uh, in, in 2011 as well. In Japan, we hit it a long, long, long time ago. Um, another eyesore slide, but something that I think is important in, in America. Um, I've traveled, I travel around the world a lot, and I used to, I think two years ago, I was at the point where when I was in Asia, I would keep my cell phone in my pocket because people would just laugh at me when I used it. And then I'd ask dumb questions. You can do that on your phone? Wow, that's really cool. And they're like, yeah, Mary, we've been able to do it for five years. But I say that because a, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, if you will. In, 2000, in the first quarter of 2009, the United States became the largest market in the world for 3G users. So the United States is now the leading market um, for high-speed mobile access. And as you all know, um, in Silicon Valley has now taken over the mantle of being the innovation leader in, um, in the mobile internet, something I thought would never happen. Uh, in fact, I thought all was lost a few years ago. So a couple more points. As you recall, 2008, 2009 were pretty difficult um, years for the economy. One of the things that struck us when we were looking at the data on the drivers of mobile access were how fast is, is GPS growing, how fast is 3G growing, how fast is Wi-Fi growing, how fast is Bluetooth growing. And when we pulled back the data, each of these markets based on users or chipsets, whatever the appropriate metric is, were growing at 40% year on year. And all of them had hundreds of millions of users. So when you find a market that has a whole ecosystem of hundreds of millions of users that's growing by 40% and you're in a recession, um, and it's not foreclosures, um, you know something is, is going on in the, in the ecosystem. Next point is social networking. Consumers want to connect um, not only via the wired world, but they also want to connect in a wireless way. This looks at social networking sites around the world, about 900 million users, up 32% year to year. Facebook has about 500 million of those, the leader in the English-speaking markets. Uh, and there are certain some leaders in other markets around the world that have strongholds where it'll be tough for Facebook to get at. But, but the number one, number one player in the market is Facebook. This looks at global usage of the top five sites on the internet on a relative basis. Uh, not on an absolute basis, but if you look at how consumers are spending their time on the internet and how it's changed over the last four or five years, the biggest gainers in usage are Facebook and YouTube by a long shot. Google has held its own, um, and MSN and Yahoo have declined on a relative basis. Google wants people in and out fast. The other sites don't, um, and, and that's pretty telling just from a standpoint of, of usage. Uh, Facebook is garnering a rising share of, of communications. Uh, one of the things that struck me about my mobile device is it's increasingly a content creation tool with the picture, the camera, and the ability, the ability to post and, and go and post it out to the web. One of the things that were, a lot of people ask the question, how will Facebook make money? I think the answer is Facebook will make money when Facebook wants to make money. And Facebook may be making money anyway, uh, but that's not the, the point. It, it's a, when we look at the advertisers that are on their site um, and, and, and companies that have affiliates, affiliations with consumers, this is a striking collection of data. Um, Zynga's Texas Hold'em has 16 and a half million fans on Facebook. Um, Disney has 3.4 million fans. Pringles has 3.1 million fans. Red Bull, 2.5 million. The NBA, 2.1 million. Um, Two million or more fans that you know about and you can connect with is a very valuable asset. Uh, some might argue it's primetime TV viewership that gets $25 CPMs or revenue per thousand page views. It's a big opportunity to, for these companies to potentially connect with customers, and it's a big opportunity to potentially get monetized. Um, so don't underestimate the connections um, that are out there. Um, another point um, on trends related to social networking, uh, and Mark Benioff will, will tell you whether I'm right or wrong, so I'm not going to steal any of his thunder, not that I could. Uh, but Salesforce.com really appears to be doing a great job of bringing social networking into, uh, into enterprises. And if, Mark, if you disagree, you can speak up now. Uh, I hear nothing, so he may be in the back. Um, video over the internet, obviously a big deal. Um, this is data that Cisco provides that looks at what's going to drive mobile internet traffic over the next, um, out to 2014. 
they forecast that mobile internet traffic will grow by 39-fold out to 2014. Most of that is, is video usage. My story of, of getting from the Upper West Side to JFK yesterday, watching the Masters is part of that. Next point, voice over IP. Consumers want to chat uh, via voice messaging and video, via wired and wireless internet. Um, if, if Skype, the leader in voice over IP, were a carrier, which it's not, and its registered users were compared with subscribers for carriers, it would be the largest carrier in the world with 520 million unique visitors, up 41% year on year. 12% of those calls are cross-border and 34% are video enabled. Obviously a big deal and obviously a cost savings opportunity for enterprises. Google Voice doing a great job of putting the user in control of voice communications via, via, voice, via IP as well. Next point in this theme of, of what are the drivers to impressive mobile devices, Apple's iPhone and iTouch and App Store created the spark that caused the mobile internet to really, to really take off. Um, this looks at the ramp of iPhone and, and iTouch. Many people talk about iPhone. They need to include iTouch in the mix. You can see the blue bar gives you a sense of number of iTouches shipped or number of iTouches um, users. And the red is, is iPhone. So there are nearly as many iTouch users as, as iPhone users. Uh, for now, Apple is leading on the innovation front, and Android is getting a fair amount of traction and momentum. This is a pretty stunning slide, as the next one will be. The yellow bar and the green bar basically represent, and you can see that the operating systems at the bottom, iPhone, Symbian, Android, RIM, Windows, Palm, and other. The yellow and green bars represent intensity of internet usage. Um, and the blue bar represents share of unit shipments of smartphones. And so you can see the iPhone is totally over-indexed in usage vis-a-vis -vis Symbian, vis-a-vis -vis RIM, Android also totally over-indexed, and the two newcomers in the market, iPhone with 16% of unit shipments and Android at 8%, are the ones that are not only gaining the unit traction, but they're also gaining the usage traction. This looks at it a different way. Uh, if you look at this, try to figure this out too fast, you'll get a headache. Um, but the red bar represents um, the share of mobile, uh, mobile internet usage by operating system, and the, green, uh, the red bar represents iPhone and um, uh, the, the green represents um, Android and, and also RIM. So again, strong growth for iPhone and strong growth for, um, for Android. Next point, game changing communications and commerce platforms, social networking and mobile are emerging very rapidly. We basically have it at a high level, two, um, two platforms that are garnering a lot of, of, um, of developer attention, whether it's social networking with Facebook, whether it's, it's mobile devices with iPhone in the lead based on app interest, and they're starting to overlap. This just looks at the ecosystems for these two platforms uh, and looks at what sort of apps are developed. One of the things I've learned about technology is in early days, um, games are usually the, the, the leading app, and then it transitions to more productivity and more business apps, and, and Facebook is no different with 500 million plus apps downloaded up tenfold year to year. You all know the Apple iPhone and iTouch data on the app download stuff. If we look at the, the connection between these two, the most downloaded free app on the iPhone is Facebook. Uh, and if Google wants to provide the same information to us, we'll provide that too, but we don't have all that yet. Um, one thing, again, on the how quickly these transitions are happening, uh, we, wanted, we went back to Japan to look at how has, how has access to social networking changed as mobile has become more relevant. The leading social networking site in Japan is a company called Mixi. In the second quarter of 2006, only 17% of their usage was on mobile devices, and now it's up to 72%. So again, a very, very rapid change uh, driven by the consumer. Another point on the themes on commerce, it just keeps getting better and better. One of the key innovators there is Amazon.com. We estimate that more than 25% of their revenue comes from their recommendation engine. But what we have here is what Amazon looked like in 1995 and what Amazon looks like in 2009. Remember, they started out in books. There are a lot of people that don't even know that. And I say that because if we can all stay on that kind of innovation trajectory um, that a lot of these companies are driving, it's, uh, it's a pretty rapid ramp and, and good for consumers. 
So mobile is revolutionizing commerce. There are four things that we're pretty excited about as it relates to commerce. One is location-based services. Two is transparent pricing. Three is deep discounts. And, and four is immediate gratification. I'm going to pick up my pace a little bit because I'm falling behind. Um, but Zipcar has one of the best location-based apps. If you haven't used it, download it. And you can find out how many Zipcars you can find on the Google campus or at Stanford. Uh, I just think it's coolest thing, not the coolest thing in the world, but it's pretty cool to be able to identify where a car is and get it and unlock it and drive it away all within five minutes. Um, I think it's a great example of, of location-based services on, on mobile devices. Another is transparent pricing. Apps like Shop Savvy and Red Laser, I'm sure you've been in a retailer recently and you've seen somebody do the barcode scan and you've seen the salesperson go, oh, no, another one of them. Um, but the pricing, pricing transparency is huge as well, and those are among some of the most actively downloaded apps on Android and also on iPhone. Deep discounts, um, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you become a Guild or One Kings Lane addict, um, but it's a great way to save money and becoming increasingly a part of the way uh, people shop. And it makes it even better on, on a mobile device. And the other is immediate gratification. If you use Pandora and you're listening to a tune and you like it and you can buy it and get it downloaded immediately, it's certainly something that didn't, didn't occur that long ago. Mobile coupons, interesting opportunities. There we think branded mobile apps that can drive um, in increased store traffic and purchases. Starbucks, a great example there. Uh, and also mobile push notification. I've heard more people talk about eBay in the context of just being out to dinner with them, being at a party, whatever. Um, that I've heard in a while, and it's because, oops, I just lost the auction, or oops, I was just outbid, I need to step away and deal with this. And, and so they're certainly getting a benefit out of real-time notification. And I think David just lost an auction for um, Ferrari that he was buying, so you might want to step out of the room and buy that. I'm joking. Um, locker, uh, I'm going to skip past Locker Z. We can come back to that if we have some time in, 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 in the end, but I want to make sure I get through this. And I have to read through seven pages of hedge clauses, so it will take me a very long time. <laughs> The next point is massive data growth is driving carrier equipment transitions. One of my favorite things about mobile internet data is one of the best surveys that came out in the early days of the mobile internet was from a company called Rubicom. And they said, how are people, asked the question, how do you use your iPhone? Came back with all these answers. And then he said, I forgot to ask if they make phone calls. Um, but other than that, the survey was fabulous. Point is, the average cell phone user spends 70% of their time on voice. The average iPhone user, 45%. This is old data. It's probably actually much, much lower than that. Uh, data that, that, that looks at how people use their mobile devices, um, music, number one, games, number two, social networking, number three, web search is number four. Um, and this, I think, may be a similar survey. They forgot to ask the question about voice, but you get, you get the point. Um, for carriers, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse. This looks at data from NTT Docomo and Vodafone, two of the largest carriers, one in Europe, one in, Europe, one in Japan, NTT Docomo, one in Europe, Vodafone. More than 70% in the case of Vodafone and more than 90% in the case of NTT Docomo of their traffic is on, on data. So also, and you can see the trajectory of it and more, more of that to come. Um, six point is some of the stuff we've learned from the past, not only from mobile, but also from the desktop internet. Number one, when consumers are empowered by the internet, usage changes can occur very quickly. Uh, nowhere is this more well represented than, than this slide. This looks at how people in the UK use their, um, used mobile on their, used the internet on their mobile devices in 2007 on the left and 2008 on the right. The, the carrier's walled gardens accounted for 57% of uses in 2007, 22% in 2008. Um, and Google went from 44% of, of usage to 82%. Um, obviously, a, a big change when the consumers were empowered by something better. Another lesson I learned, um, thought I knew but wasn't quite sure and felt like I was proven wrong and then was proven right, but advertising dollars ultimately follow eyeballs. This looks back at the data from 1995. Um, there, were, there were 6 million internet users, and ad, advertising revenue per user was $9. It was a whopping $55 million market. In 2009, it's a $54 billion market. The $9 has gone from $46 a user, and the 6 million users has gone to $1.2 billion. So if you ever doubt that the ad market will work, I think the facts are here. It's just a question of, of, um, of trajectory. 
New business models are often created during technology changes. Um, I'm reasonably confident to say I guarantee no one in this room ten, 10 years ago would have said that virtual goods or virtual dirt, as someone I'm very fond of said recently, would be a $2 billion business in uh, China in 2009. But that's a legit business with high revenues supporting the market capitalization of a company called Tencent, uh, which is, I think, 30 billion, 30 billion plus in market cap. One thing that's very different um, about the mobile internet versus the desktop internet is people pay for stuff. And if you, this is a pie chart that looks at how revenue is derived on the desktop internet. 40%, and this is all, this is all, you have to, there's some um, apples and oranges comparisons here, but it's directionally accurate. 40% of revenue is generated by advertising, 35% by e-commerce, and 25% for paid services, basically, um, 30 percent, consumers pay for 30 percent of the stuff they get. If we look at the mobile internet, consumers pay for 76 percent of the stuff they get, whether it's the app, whether it's the wallpaper, whether it is the service. And why is that? It's because the billing systems are in place. If someone had dropped down in 1995 and said, hey, every content provider, adopt this, adopt this um, neutral uh, standard payment system and everybody decided to do it, the monetization of the desktop internet would be very different. The mobile internet has just evolved differently in part because of carriers and in part because of, of, of some, of the, some of the software players. Um, next point, I'm going to drill down on what Japan revenue recognition looks like for the mobile internet. And then I'll go quickly to hedge clauses before I make a couple of comments. I know you guys are all on the edge of your seats. But um, the rest of the world's mobile internet revenue mix in 2008 is equal to the, what Japan looked like in 2007. So basically, the rest of the world, the, the rest of the world is five to 10 years behind Japan in monetization. Um, and if we look at Japan in 2008, they generate about 66% of their mobile revenue from data access. So that's to, to carriers. 21% from e-commerce, 11% um, from paid services, and 2% from mobile. If we look at the rest of the world today, which is on the far left, that's 88% from, from data access versus 66% in Japan, 9% from mobile paid services versus 21% in Japan, 2% from, um, excuse me, paid services versus 11% in Japan. I misspoke. It was 9% from mobile online commerce in the rest of the world versus 21% in Japan, and then 1% from advertising versus 2% in Japan. The reason this is here is like that advertising, advertising revenue follows eyeballs. We think this gives us a template for the way monetization of the mobile internet will, will play out in the rest of the world. Bottom line, the rapid ramp of mobile internet usage will be a boon to consumers, and some companies will likely win big, potentially very big, while many will wonder what just happened. And before I move to the hedge clauses, I'm going to go through the hedge clauses, and then they're all available on the web. Um, and uh, we can skip past that and go right to that. But just from a CIO perspective, a lot of this was consumer focused. And just four points that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on before I close. Um, one, the desktop internet ramp, which really occurred from 1995 to 2007, in my opinion, was just a warm up act uh, for what we're seeing happen on the mobile internet. Uh, the ramp is just happening that much faster. And that seemed like it was pretty fast to a lot of us. Though the good news is consumers are more ready and enterprises are more ready. Many people were caught flat afoot in, in 1995 when the desktop internet evolved. Second point, the pace of change and in innovation rel related to the mobile internet is unprecedented, I think, in world history. Um, the third is consumers are leading and moving faster than their enterprises, and most of it are in the cloud. That, we discussed that, in the, this, or that was discussed in the CIO panel earlier today. And the fourth and final point is it's more important than ever to listen to employees. They'll tell you where you need to take IT and again, that was discussed in the CIO panel, and that was very different as recently as, as five to 10 years ago. So I hope that was helpful. And um, you can kick me out. Thank you. Thank you. you want to take one or two questions? It, your call. Okay. I'm, over, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very okay. nervous. I'm three Great. minutes and 50 seconds. You got time over, for one or two schedule. questions if anybody has a question. I can Don't answer it in three seconds. Yep. Sir. I'll repeat yeah, it's, it's a, you want to repeat it? 
Will Japan be the benchmark for technology evolution, and if not, where will it be seen? Yeah, it, it, I, don't, I think it'll be the, um, the leading thing we watch to see how we develop the mobile internet for at least the next couple of years. But um, the reality is the development of the mobile internet was constrained by the carriers. It was constrained by our own lack of innovation. And that groundswell has broken. And I've, I've never seen a 10-year, something that was hamstrung for 10 years, just get unleashed with really cool products, with a lot of people that are jumping up and, and ready to develop. So I think the innovation in the mobile internet is going to be right here in the United States of America for quite, quite a while. That's a good place to end. Okay. And right. David might say right here on campus, but that's up for him to say. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Thank you.